Okay, so in this video, we will prove the alternating series test. If you recall, we assume that we have a positive sequence in Bn, and if Bn is eventually decreasing, and the limit of Bn as n tends to infinity is equal to zero, then the corresponding alternating series converges. So to prove this result, we cannot attack the series directly. We will look at the sequence of its partial sums, and we'll break this up into two cases. The partial sums when we're summing an even number of terms, and the partial sums when we're summing an odd number of terms. We will also assume that Bn is decreasing from the beginning. As always, we can always ignore the first few terms of a series, and this does not affect convergence. So to simplify the argument, we will assume that Bn is decreasing from the beginning. So B0 is larger than B1, larger than B2, larger than B3, larger than B4, and so forth. As we move further and further down our sequence, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and all the terms of our sequence are strictly positive. So let's first consider the sequence of partial sums when we are summing an even number of terms. So we'll call this En. As we're summing negative 1 to the n, Bn are alternating terms when n begins at 0 and ends at 2n minus 1. And I claim that for any uppercase n, we are summing here an even number of terms of our series. Well, let's see. If you remember, the number of terms you're summing is simply obtained by the upper bound of summation minus the lower bound of summation plus 1. So 2n minus 1 minus 0 plus 1 gives you 2n terms. So for any choice of n, we are summing 2n terms, and for any choice of n, 2n is an even number. So here we're considering the sequence of partial sums when we're summing an even number of terms. So let's look at the terms of our sequence expanded out. We will prove two things, that the sequence is increasing and bounded above. So if we expand this out, we have b0 minus b1 plus b2 minus b3 plus dot dot dot. The last term would be b sub 2n minus 1, so the previous term will be b sub 2n minus 2. That is an even term, we'll have a plus 1, so plus b sub 2n minus 2. 2n minus 1 is odd, this will be negative b sub 2n minus 1. Let's look at this sum. As we have an even number of terms, we can pair them up two at a time. So the first pair plus the second pair up to the last pair, the nth pair. What's interesting now is that b0 is larger than b1, and so b0 minus b1 is positive. b2 is larger than b3, so b2 minus b3 is positive. Up to b2n minus 2 is larger than b2n, uh, yeah, b2n minus 2, sorry, is larger than b2n minus 1, and so this is also positive. So if you look, En, summing up the terms two at a time, is a sum of positive terms. This plus this up to plus this. So as n increases, we're summing more and more positive terms, which proves that En is increasing. And now let's prove that En is bounded above. Now clearly, we have a lower bound as we're adding positive terms, two at a time, the result is positive. So we have an obvious lower bound, but let's prove that we also have an upper bound. So let me rewrite En, expand it out, and now we'll pair the terms in a different way. So I will 
leave B0 alone, and I will start pairing next. So I'll do plus these two together, so B2 minus B1, plus this would be B4 minus B3, all the way down to plus Bn minus 2 minus Bn minus 3, B2n minus 2, sorry, minus the previous term, which is B2n minus 3, and the last term plus minus B2n minus 1. So if you look at these terms now, B2 is less than B1, so B2 minus B1 is negative. B4 is less than B3, so B4 minus B3 is negative, up to B sub 2n minus 2 is also less than B sub 2n minus 3, as this term comes before this one, this is also negative, and negative B sub 2n minus 1. Well, as every term of our sequence is positive, B2n minus 1 is positive, but its negative is of course negative. And so you see, we obtain En, looking at the sum this way, by starting at B0 and then adding more and more negative terms. So the sum can never be larger than B0. So now we have that En is less than B0. What is our conclusion? What we have here in En, the sequence of partial sums, where we are summing an even number of terms, the sequence is increasing, so as n increases, en becomes larger and larger and larger, but en is bounded above. So at some point en must hit the ceiling and it will converge. And this is, of course is a consequence of the monotone convergence theorem. So en must converge to some real number, call it L1, as n approaches infinity, by, of course, the monotone convergence theorem. Let's now look at the corresponding sequence of partial sums when we are summing now an odd number of terms, which is the only other possibility. So let's recall that we have a positive sequence that is decreasing. So as we move further and further down our sequence, the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they are all strictly positive. And now we look at what we're going to call On, the sequence of partial sums, when we are summing an odd number of terms. This will be the sum of negative 1 to the n b n, as n goes from 0 to uppercase 2 n. So how many terms are we summing? Well again, this will be 2n minus 0 plus 1, so here we are summing 2n plus 1 terms. But for any n, 2n plus 1 is an odd number, so we are now summing an odd number of terms. We will prove that this sequence is bounded below and decreasing. So let's expand out this sum. So we have b0 minus b1 plus b2 minus b3 plus dot 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 up to b sub 2n minus 2 minus b sub 2n minus 1 plus b sub 2n. As 2n is even, negative 1 to an even power is positive 1. So let's prove that this is actually larger than 0 which will be our lower bound. B0 is larger than B1, so B0 minus B1 is positive. B2 is larger than B3, so B2 minus B3 is also positive. Up to our last pair, B2n minus 2 minus B2n minus 1, but this is an earlier term, 
than this one, so this is larger than b2n minus 1, so it's also positive. And plus the last term b2n, but every term of the sequence is positive, this is again a positive term. So you can see for any n, by pairing up the initial pairs and looking at the last positive term, all n is a sum of positive terms. Therefore, it's clearly positive. So we have a lower bound. O n for any n is larger than 0. By rearranging the terms a little bit, let's prove that O n is also a decreasing sequence. So we'll keep B0 alone, and I will start pairing the terms. So plus B2 minus B1 plus B4 minus B3 plus dot 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 all the way down to B2n minus B sub 2n minus 1. Now let's see what happens. B2 is less than B1, so B2 minus B1 is negative. B4 is less than B3, and so B4 minus B3 is also negative. And so every pair you can see is negative. Again, 2n comes after 2n minus 1, and so B2n is a later term than B2n minus 1, so this term is smaller than the previous term, B2n minus 1, so the difference is negative. So now look at what happens. If you look at O is 0, you sum from 0 to 0, and you get the term B0. That is the first term of your sequence. And then later on, O1, you subtract something from B0. O2, subtract even more. O3, subtract even more. And you can see, as n becomes larger and larger and larger, you're subtracting more and more from B0. So as n increases, you're subtracting more and more, and so the sequence ON becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Therefore, it is a decreasing sequence. But now we have a decreasing sequence that is bounded below by 0. So the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but they never go beyond 0. So they always stay positive. So at some point, as the terms of when keeps shrinking, we'll have to hit a wall. And that will be the point at which we converge. And of course, this is a consequence of the monotone convergence theorem. So ON must converge to a real number, say L2, as N approaches infinity. And this is, of course, by the monotone convergence theorem. So now we have, in the sequence of partial sums, where we are summing an even number of terms, a convergent series, and the same when we have the sequence of partial sums summing an odd number of terms, it also converges. <coughs> what we now want to prove is that they both converge to the exact same value. So let's go back to the sequence of partial sums when we were summing an even number of terms, en. <coughs> Sorry. So we are summing from 0 to 2n minus 1, negative 1 to the n, bn, and we have proved that this sequence of partial sums will converge to some real number l1. as n approaches infinity, and now we have a similar result for O n, the sequence of partial sums when we are summing an odd number of terms. They both converge, and we'll show that they converge to the same value. The proof of this is remarkably simple. Simply look at O n minus E n. <coughs> 
on if you look at the upper bound of summation is exactly en plus an extra term as you go from 2n minus 1 up to 2n you're going up one step and that term will be negative 1 to the 2n which is plus 1 times b2n but we know that as the index of our sequence goes to infinity the sequence goes to infinity right recall that the limit this was the other assumption that we haven't used so far of b n as n goes to infinity goes to zero so if we let uppercase n now tend to infinity then clearly 2n also goes to infinity but as the index of our sequence goes to infinity the sequence itself goes to zero so b2n must converge to zero so as n tends to infinity o n minus e n converge converges to zero but think about this o n converges to l2 as n goes to infinity, e n converges to l1 as n goes to infinity. Therefore, o n minus e n must converge to l2 minus l1. But this sequence converges to zero, so l2 minus l1 has to be equal to zero. Therefore, l2 is equal to l1, which is what we wanted to prove. So both sequences of partial sums, whether you have an even number of terms or an odd number of terms, converge to the same value. Let's call this L. And now with this, we can go back to the initial alternating series and prove convergence very easily. So we look at the initial series from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, b n. Well, we will now look at this rigorously as the limit of its partial sums. So we will sum the first few terms of our series from 0 to uppercase n, and then we will let uppercase n tend to infinity. And now if you think about this, when you have the sequence of partial sums, there are only two possibilities. Either you are summing an odd number of terms or you are summing an even number of terms. The great thing is in both cases whether you're summing an even number of terms or an odd number of terms you converge to the same value and so the initial sequence of partial sums has no other option but to converge in the limit to the exact same value which proves that our alternating series converges. And that's it. So to summarize, we have to show essentially three things. That instead of considering the sequence of partial sums directly, we looked at two cases. The sequence of partial sums when we were summing an even number of terms. And we proved that this converges to some real number. We looked at the sequence of partial sums when we were summing an odd number of terms, which also converges, because the terms we're summing converge to zero, both sequences of partial sums, the even number of terms and the odd number of terms, have to converge to the same value. And looking back at the initial sequence of partial sums, there are only two options. We are either summing an even number of terms or an odd number of terms, and in both cases, we converge to the same value. And so, the alternating series converges to that very same value. And that's it.